Hi guys, today we're looking at half equations, uh, which is a higher tier thing, and it's I know, something that confuses quite a lot of people, so I'm going to try and break it down quite slowly. Um, there's also a second part of today's lesson, which will be going up at the same time, which is about ionic equations. I suggest you watch this one first and follow it up with the ionic equations. Um, now, today what we're going to look at is what half equations are, how we write them out, and why they're useful. So half equations, what are they? A half equation shows what's happening to electrons when a species is oxidized or reduced during a chemical reaction. And what I mean by species is it can be an atom, an element, or even indeed a, a group of atoms, so a, a part of a molecule and what's happening to that. Most often at GCSE, we see it with electrolysis questions, but it can crop up in redox questions or redox reactions. A redox reaction being a reduction oxidation reaction. So in other words, when something is being reduced and oxidized in the same reaction, uh, you will find that that's pretty much all reactions where there is reduction and oxidation going on. Something is being reduced and something else is being oxidized. The thing that's being reduced is being reduced by the thing that's being oxidized. It gets quite convoluted, but it you basically you see both of them happening at the same time. And they're useful because they show how the electrons move in the reaction. And when we look at how electrons move in, move in the reaction, we can see what's reacting with what. And in particular, we can also see what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. So first example is electrolysis. So they show what happened at each electrode. And we need to work out what's going to be oxidized and what's going to be reduced at each electrode and we can do that by remembering oil rig. Oil rig is an, a little an acronym, stands for oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons. So loss of electrons, gain of electrons by either an atom or a group of atoms. So really easy. What products are we making in other words? Now the next step is to work out the charges on the ions and start to work out an equation. So the equation always looks like ions on the left hand side makes uncharged product on the right. So if it's a reduction, this is for electrolysis, if it's a reduction half equation then the electrons get added on the left hand side. If it's an oxidation half equation then the electrons get added on the right hand side because in a reduction reaction, reduction is gain of electrons so they need to be getting electrons and oxidation is loss of electrons. The electrons need to appear on the other side of the equation. So here's an example, this time with molten sodium chloride. Notice it's molten, that's an important part because it makes different products. So the products of molten sodium, of sodium chloride are going to be sodium and chlorine. Sodium goes to the cathode to gain electrons because it's a metal. Metals always get a positive charge, so it goes to the negative electrode to gain electrons. And if it's gaining electrons, it's being reduced. Chloride ions, they're going to go to the anode where they're going to lose electrons to form chlorine gas. So that means it's going to be oxidized. So, sodium, group one metal. Group one metal means its charge is always plus one. Group two metals, charge is always plus two. Group three atoms or elements, charge is always plus three for GCSE. Uh, group seven elements, charge is minus one and group six elements charge is minus two so you need to know those so we start writing out an equation with the iron on the left now we know sodium is going to have a plus one charge and we're going to make sodium metal which is just na with no charge so we get na plus arrow na next thing we need to add in electrons so we know sodium needs to gain an electron to become neutrally charged so we add that on on the left hand side because this is what's happening at the cathode. So we get Na plus E minus. E minus is an electron, makes sodium metal uncharged. So you can see the charges here are balancing out. So that was what happened at the cathode. Now we'll have a look at what happens at the anode. That, by the way, should have a gap in between the Na and the Cl3. It's not NaCl3, that doesn't exist. So chlorine is a group 7 element. So the charge on its iron is always going to be if you can remember from what I said earlier, minus one. Uh, so we start writing the equation with the iron on the left because this is electrolysis and we get Cl minus makes Cl. However, 
chlorine gas is always diatomic because all gases apart from all the elemental gas gases apart from the noble gases always go around in pairs so diatomic so we need to add that in and then balance the equation so we get cl minus make cl2 that's not balanced so we need a big number two in front of this cl there to make two cl minus makes cl2 chlorine gas now we need to add in the electrons and because this is the anode and we know the chloride needs to lose electrons we have to put the electrons on the left hand side so we write right hand side sorry so we write 2 Cl minus makes Cl2 plus two electrons because each chlorine is losing an electron you can also write it although I've not got it here sorry you can also write it as 2 Cl minus minus two electrons makes Cl2 now when we have a look at the aqueous sodium chloride and the electrolysis of that it's aqueous so we need to consider the react reactivity of the metal versus hydrogen sodium more reactive than hydrogen as we've discussed in a, another lesson so hydrogen is going to get formed at the cathode halide or chloride is present so we're going to make chlorine at the anode so there are our products the chloride to chlorine ions is exactly the same as the previous example so we're going to have cl 2 cl minus makes Cl2 plus two electrons. But since we're going to make hydrogen, we're going to have a new half equation for that. So we start off with our iron and we go to our uncharged species. The iron that hydrogen makes for the purpose of GCSE is always H plus. So we get H plus plus H makes H. All gases, apart from the noble gases, all elemental gases, I should say, so all, all gases that are just made from one type of atom are always diatomic. So we get two H's, H pluses makes hydrogen, H2. Then we need to add in our electrons. So if we've got two H pluses, we know we're going to have to have two electrons to balance it out to make our H2. Okay, because each of these H pluses needs to have an electron to balance out that positive charge. So this is our half equation there. Another example, this time electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate. Now we know copper is less reactive than hydrogen, so that's going to be formed at the cathode. Uh, we've got no halide, so we're going to make oxygen and water at the anode. And copper is a metal, so it's going to have a positive charge. And that positive charge, which you may or may not know, is a 2 plus charge. So copper most often makes a 2 plus charge. The oxygen and the water are going to be made from the hydroxide ions, which again you should be able to remember from the electrolysis lesson. So at the cathode, the negative electrode, we've got our Cu2 plus makes copper. How many electrons is it going to take to balance out that positive two charge? You should have got that. It's two electrons. So we write that on the left hand side because it's what's happening at the cathode. So we get our Cu2 plus plus two electrons makes copper. So our copper ions are being reduced. They're gaining electrons and forming copper metal. At the anode, We've got our OH minus, and that's going to make H2O plus O2. Now this takes a little bit more balancing. The first step here is to balance the atoms. So if we have a look, this is what the equation looks like at the end, but we can count. Here we've got one oxygen on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we've got one plus two, three oxygens. We've got one hydrogen here and two hydrogens here. Now, one oxygen, three oxygens we could put a three there and make three oxygens but that would make three hydrogens and that would be hard to balance over here so the solution is we stick a four in front of the oh so it means we've got four oxygens and four hydrogens to balance out the hydrogens we can put a number two in front of the water two h2o so that means two times two hydrogens so we've got four hydrogens four hydrogens we've also got two oxygens plus two oxygens makes four oxygens so that's balanced then we need to balance the electrons because we've got four negative charges here so four you can imagine that's minus one we've got four times minus one we need to put the four negative charges over on this side and write the balanced half equation like this because it's showing where the electrons are moving what we're trying to do is we're trying to balance the atoms first and then we're trying to balance the charges 
Now we can only balance the charges by moving electrons. We can't move a positive charge because they are trapped inside the nucleus. Now, a slightly different example. You could have a look in them inside a redox reaction. Now, this reaction here, iron oxide plus aluminium to make aluminium oxide and iron is better known as the thermite reaction, which you may have seen a demonstration of, you may have seen a video of it. And the equation for it is Fe2O3 plus 2Al makes Al2O3 plus 2Fe. So you can see that essentially the iron here is swapping places with the aluminium because the aluminium is more reactive it steals the oxide away from the iron and we make our iron. Now, I've not put state symbols on here but iron oxide is a solid, aluminium is a solid, aluminium oxide is a solid but when this reaction happens the heat generated will actually melt the iron. Okay so the iron will be molten iron so it will be liquid form. So, the half equation focuses on what gets oxidised or reduced. So, in other words, what's going to change the charges on it, whether it's positive or negative. So, elements always have a charge of zero. So, whether that's iron, aluminium, oxygen, chlorine, sulphur, it doesn't matter if they're in a group like this, as long as they're an element, the charge is zero. So, have a look at this equation here, and you should be able to pick out two species which have got a zero charge on them. And you can spot those because they're the elements. We've got aluminium, just by itself, 2Al, that has a zero charge on it. And the Fe here, the iron, has got a zero charge on it here. When they're in compounds, they're in ionic compounds, and we know ionic compounds, the metals have a charge on them. So we can tell that the metals are either gaining or losing electrons, they're gaining or losing a charge in this reaction. So they're what we're going to focus on. Okay, so there we go. Aluminium and iron change their charges. So breaking it down, that oxide is 2 minus charge. So we should remember that oxygen forms a 2 minus charge when it forms an iron. So both iron oxide and aluminium oxide have got 3 oxides. So we've got 3 times minus 2 for our charge. So we've got 3 lots of minus 2. So 3 times 2 minus gives us a 6 minus charge. That means these three oxygens in this compound have got a total charge of minus six. The metal must balance that out. Okay, so the charges must be balanced by the metals. So the iron, the two ions here, must have enough charge to balance out the minus six charge from the oxide. So it must have a total charge of plus six. That plus six is going to be spread amongst those two iron atoms in the iron oxide. So you should be able to work out that if those two iron atoms have got to have a total charge of plus six, the charge must be plus three on each iron. The same is true for aluminium. So each of the ions in that reaction have a charge of plus three on in the oxide and when it's aluminium oxide they've got a charge of plus three. So the iron here is going from a charge of plus three to a charge of zero. Each aluminium is going from a charge of zero to a charge of plus three. So for iron to go from a plus three to a zero charge, it's got to gain three electrons. So we can make a half equation based on this. Okay, so we're going to ignore the oxide part because the oxide part is not changing its oxidation state. So we get Fe3+, plus, which is here, plus three electrons, which it's going to gain from the aluminium, makes our Fe. You notice I've not got Fe3 plus with a 2 down here. We don't need to do that because we're just going to focus on each individual iron atom. And at the end, we don't need 2 Fe because we've just got 1 Fe at the beginning. Okay, simple. Now for the aluminium, we're going from a 0 to a plus 3 charge. So this time it's going to lose 3 electrons. So it's going to be oxidized. We put that into the equation. Starting this time from the left hand side, what we've got here, so we've got Al with no charge, is going to make Al3 plus, plus the three electrons that are going to go spare. And those three electrons go to the iron. The iron takes those electrons to make the uh, neutrally charged elemental iron. You could also write it as Al minus three electrons makes Al3 plus. Okay, summary of ionic equations then. 
or half equation, sorry. So a half equation shows a species that's being oxidized or reduced. A species is an atom or a group of atoms. And it's often used to show what happens to electrodes, uh, electrons, sorry, at the electrodes and electrolysis. At the negative electrode, the cathode, the general half equation is always x, n plus, plus n e minus makes x. And what that means is x is any element normally a metal, but it could also be something like hydrogen with a positive charge. N is just the number of the positive charge. That could be one, two, three, four, five. And if we've got one, two, three, four, five for a positive charge there, we need that number of uh, electrons. So we'd have, if we had, uh, say, Cu2+, plus, we'd have two there. N would be two. So two would get put there, two electrons. So it shouldn't be subscript there. Uh, my version of Word is very, very hard to stop it formatting in, in odd ways. I don't, it's a bit of an old version and I'm, I can't afford to upgrade or justify the expense of upgrading. At the positive electrode, the half equation always follows a general rule. Y, N minus makes Y plus N electrons. So again, Y is any element with a negative charge n is the uh, number of that negative charge, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and whatever that number is will also be the number of electrons that it releases. Okay, I hope you found that a little bit useful. Um, please leave your questions down below. Please remember to subscribe, share this with anyone that might find it useful, and please remember to like, and I hope to see you soon. Remember, there will be also a video on the kind of twin of this, which is uh, ionic equations. Okay, take care, guys. See you soon.